If you've been around online in the tech community for the last little while looking at smartphones, then you may have noticed there's a fierce debate online versus curved and flat screens. Now, I've got devices with both types in front of me today, and I'm gonna be outlining the top five differences between them, hopefully in an unbiased way, to let you decide for yourself which one is right for you. So before I start this video, I should mention that curved and flat screens, there's a bit of a sliding scale in there. There's a bit of a gray area as well. Some screens are really curved, like you can go back to the Samsung Galaxy S8, um, you can look at some Huawei phones. This OnePlus phone uh, that I have here is pretty curved, but it is a sliding scale. So Samsung in particular has been dialing it back for the last couple of generations. Their curve is just ever so slight now. So do a little bit of research on that if you are going to be purchasing a new device. But today I'm just gonna be outlining five general tips and differences for when you're considering these two types of phone. So the number one thing that people seem to cite in terms of bad things about curved displays is the fragility. And I do tend to agree. Because of the device having the screen A bent and B closer to the edges of the phone, if you drop it or scratch it, it's more likely to damage the screen. Because A, the screen is taking up more area, so there's just more of it to harm. And then B, if you drop the phone on the side or the corner, the screen is right there. So it will take some damage if you do drop the device on its edges. And that's unfortunate. So hopefully with new glass technologies, new Gorilla Glass is just out and um, increasing understanding of smartphone materials, this will be minimized. But it is undeniable that a boxy screen is less fragile than one that's curved and rounded. Now a close second in terms of bad things about curved screens is accidental touches. And I've experienced this myself. So when you're on a curved screen and you're just holding it with one hand or even two, it's very common to have part of your hand, like your fingers over here, or part of your hand, accidentally press the side of the screen because it's curved right into where you're gripping it. So this has two effects and I'm gonna keep them separate. So one, one thing that can happen is when you go like this on the phone, you can accidentally press a button and that's not great. You might launch an app you weren't expecting to, accidentally take a picture, launch a new app, whatever. And that's not great. So you can accidentally do some stuff. But then another thing that I've actually found a little more annoying is if you have your hand on the screen but you don't know it and then you try to tap somewhere else, and it's not working because the phone is already registering the touch somewhere else. So let's say this blank bottom area of the screen, I just had my hand there in the corner and then I had my other hand, I'm trying to like search something on Google and I'm touching the screen and it's not working because the touch is already being registered down here and I find this very annoying. I call it like a holding touch. I don't know if there's an official term for it, but it is annoying and it is a disadvantage along with accidental presses that are very annoying on curved screens if they happen often. Now let's go in the other direction. So curved screens do have a distinct advantage when it comes to aesthetics. Now, of course, this is going to be subjective, but I think it's hard to argue that this modern form factor looks better than this. Now, not all flat screens have huge bezels like this old phone here. But for the most part, there will be a more noticeable bezel on the outside, a decreased screen to body ratio, and overall just an older look, if that's an appropriate way to describe it. This is the future. There's no doubt about it. We are getting to larger and larger screen to body ratios. This just looks dated in comparison. So aesthetics are a huge reason for getting a curved screen phone. Now the last reason, number five, is actually not directly related to the curved screen, but it is something notable about this technology. Curved screens are more likely to have rounded corners. If you've noticed on these two models of phone I have here, very rounded corners on the OnePlus, on the Samsung, square as hell. Rectangular, technically. So what you will find is when manufacturers 
curve the screen right over the edges, they're going for a more rounded phone to fit the hand. So what this often means is that there's also rounded corners on the edge of the phone or the edge of the screen rather. So this can mean buttons, content can get cut off and it can be a little annoying. It can look weird in some apps. But the other thing to note is that the reason this is, is because think about it. If you're curving the screen over the edges, you want a higher screen to body ratio. So you're gonna also push the screen this way and up to the top and down to the bottom. But the problem is there's curves there. Whereas here on the Samsung, there's a huge bezel here where the curve is. But if this phone had screen that went all the way to the top and bottom of the phone, it would also curve. So in the push for screen to body ratios that are higher, curved screens and rounded corners often go hand in hand. So if you're like so-so on the whole rounded or curved screen, but you hate rounded corners, it might be advisable to go to a phone with a more flat display. So those are my thoughts on the top five differences between curved and flat screens on smartphones today. There are differences, but both are fundamentally the same thing. It's the same screen under there. It's all about what's important to you. Do you prefer the aesthetics or are you worried about the fragility and accidental touches? It's all up to you. Manufacturers will continue to make both of these because there are crowds out there that are fans of both. Neither is wrong. It's all about personal preference. And hopefully you learn something from this video and can make a more informed buying decision for your next smartphone. Anyway, thank you for watching everyone. Subscribe for more smartphone and general tech related videos. I've got lots of content planned for 2021. And you can also follow me on Twitter at KyleGNew for video updates and notifications.